So hi, apparently we're live. This looks good. Um, let's check that. Um, and um, yeah, so this is the first time I've done this. So uh, if things aren't working very well, then um, then bear with me. I will try and make it right. Um, if you're uh, watching this, um, put something in the comments and I'll try and reply to it. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing some drawing today. Um, so this is a bit of a test. I have a um, I have a couple of events next week because I'm holding an exhibition of prints and some watercolours as well uh, in Edinburgh and because of Covid and not many people being able to get to the gallery but also because there's um, yeah because there's people kind of have been interested in my work from all over the place I thought it would be good to do something online and uh, yeah it'd be great to um, yeah to to do something uh kind of in line with that exhibition so i thought well i'll do something live and i'll try streaming so uh so yeah so that that's why i'm why i'm here um oh i've got people saying hello 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 petra and hello patricia that's very exciting um so in a minute i'm going to switch the camera over to the overhead camera and i'm gonna um i've got a little setup here and i'm going to do some drawing um the plan today is to do a line and wash drawing of uh, this, which is Smith's Tavern, uh, which is in Ashbourne in Derbyshire. I was there last year and I got some nice photos. The, uh, the photo will be up on the screen, so if you want to join in, then you can do that. Um, so yeah, so I think without messing around a little anymore, I'm going to switch you over to the overhead camera and if you've got any questions, I'll try and keep an eye on the chat and see if I can answer them. Um, got a few more people watching. That's great. Um, hi. And uh, yeah, so the plan is I, I, I imagine this will go on for about an hour. Um, but if you need to dock out before then, that's absolutely fine. And hopefully it's going to be recorded so it'll be on the channel live. Um, no, it'll be on the channel after we've finished the stream. So. Um, so if you're not able to kind of catch it, then you'll be able to uh, watch it later. So, um, so hi, hi, Amika. Hi, uh, hi, Eileen. Uh, nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, right. Let's switch this over. There we go. So I will say that we might get interrupted today um, by my dog who barks at any little noise. Um, every time I record a video, I have to cut out her woofing for several minutes. So uh, yeah, so that might that might be an issue. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. If anybody comes to the door, um, you'll hear her. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, you should be able to see the reference image on the left-hand side of the screen um, and then over here and uh, do let me know if you can't see it or if there's anything um, yeah if there's anything you need to know um, today I've got my moleskin watercolor sketchbook that I'm going to be drawing on so there's a few of my sketches in there already and I've got a pencil to do a basic sketch with uh, I've got a rubber um, rather manky looking kneadable eraser for rubbing out I'm going to be using a 0.3 fine liner pen to do the initial drawing and then I've got my set of watercolours, I've got my jar of water, a paper towel and uh, a paintbrush. Um, not quite sure what size I'm going to use, I'll probably use this one because this has been my go-to for the last few weeks. Um, but I may also switch to something smaller for some detailed areas. So I've got uh, a number four round paintbrush as well. So I'll put those to one side. I'll pop the paints to one side. Um. So yeah, I'm just checking to see everybody's happy and there's um, see if there's any questions or anything. Um, hope you can see what I'm doing. So 
So I picked this uh, this building because it was really tall and skinny. So um, I like that. Um, I like the the kind of the dimensions of it, and it may be good to even exaggerate that a little bit. Um, so I'm going to start um, by drawing the basic outline. Um, I can put a bottom of the building in there and then I can kind of just kind of guess what the proportions are. I'm going to make these lines a little bit darker so you can see them on the camera. So if you're watching along are you are you drawing and painting along as well or um, are you are you just watching? Uh, either is absolutely fine um, I'm just I'm just curious to know. So there's the the basics of my building um, and then I want to I want to decide how tall I'm going to make it. So I think maybe it could even be a little bit taller, so I can put the the roof kind of above it, and then see there's a little window there. There's a couple of windows there below it, and then the kind of the shop bit. Yeah, I think that could work. Let me go over those lines a little bit. A little bit more. So the edge of the roof, it kind of it angles back a little bit, like that. And let's put the top in on there. It's actually not very straight. It's a nice wibbly kind of line. It kind of goes up at the top. So uh, that's something I can bring out more when I put the pen in. And then down here, there's a chimney um, that comes to about there. And then you just see that kind of angle right the way back. So yeah, so I've just drawn this little rectangle um, kind of into the into the roof there. Um, but then there's a little line next to it that just kind of heads back. Um, and that's that's like the top of the chimney. But because you're so far below it, it looks like it's really that extreme angle. So yeah, so there's a mixture of people drawing and watching. That's cool. Right. So um, the next thing I want to do is to get the the windows in. So there's a, a window at the top that is kind of quite a small one. And then directly below that, there are two much taller kind of sash windows. And then they've got these lovely angled stone bits at the top. So I'm just going to draw my sketch lines down and then kind of I'm kind of looking at it to work out where the bottom of that window is going to be. I'm going to lightly put in a line there, but I think it might actually need to be a little bit further down than that. Um, let's see, there's a little bit of a gap until the next window. The next window is maybe slightly taller than that one at the top. So actually, I think that maybe that line wasn't too bad. But the thing about doing it in pencil is that I can always go back in and change it later. So I'm putting those uh, lintels, the big stone lintels in again. So that's a really like obvious feature of this building. And then where the windows below that and then in between the windows, there's the sign, the shop sign. Um, to about there. And then below that, I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap because there's um, some like hanging basket hangers below that. Um, and then I can put a line in for the top of the shop and actually that kind of extends out to the left a little bit so the cream bit um there's like the lamp in the middle uh just there there's a lamp there like that And then this bit actually extends out to the side a little bit. Now I can decide whether I want to cut that off at the edge of the building 
um, or whether I want to kind of leave that in. It does kind of go right into this door, the green doorway which is next door. So I can pencil that in now and then just decide whether I want to keep that in later. I may, you know, I could even like do little bits of the building next to it. Um, and then this one here. And you can always like paint them in a lighter colour so that they're less obvious than the, the main one. So that it's obvious this is the focus. So yeah, I'm just having a look at the, uh, at the comments and uh, yeah. Oh, hello. Hello, Felicity. It's good to see you. Nice for everybody to join in. Um, so I've just started doing the, the sketch and I'm just doing a little pencil sketch and just getting the, the big shapes in. Um, I'm at the minute trying to decide whether I do anything outside this building or not. That, To be honest, that might depend on how much time this takes um, because I want to, yeah, I, I want to try and keep to time. I'm not very good at that, especially when I get kind of focused on something. I really kind of get into a zone and um, and everything else kind of loses, um, loses focus. So time and everything can completely go out of the window. So I'm just putting in um, a shape there for the doorway, for the two windows on either side, and then There is some like darker bits at the bottom where the, the stonework stops and there's like a painted bit underneath that. Just put that in there, there's a little step. Another step up to the doorway. And then some signs kind of propped up outside the, the, the windows there. So I think that's all the pencil that I'm going to put in. I'm going to move on now to the pen. Am I going at a decent speed for everybody? Is everybody kind of catching up? So I'm... So yeah, so I like to get a decent sketch in and I've, I hope you can see this one. I've, 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 I've done it a little darker than I normally would because I just, yeah, I want it to be obvious on the, on the camera. Um, and then I'm going to go in with the pen and um, add in like the outlines and then go over again and put the details in. So um, I'm going to start at the top and kind of work my way down. So I'm going to try and get this kind of slightly wonky roof line in there. And that goes to there. And if you need to like break the line and do it in a couple of bits, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to do line down the side and then this line down here. And I'm deliberately leaving the chimney um, because I know that I want to um, be a bit more careful about where that coat goes. So I find it easier to draw up from this side and then across and then down and draw that kind of rectangle in there. And then I can draw this bit up the side there and then the, the top of the chimney there. Now sometimes you can see chimney pots on the tops of chimneys but I can't in this case so that's, um, that's all I'm going to do there. And then the edge of the roof here comes down like that. And again it's not very straight, it's a little bit, a little bit wonky. In fact I think it's higher up on the left than it is on the right. Um, I like to put in the drain pipe because then that helps me to know like where the next layer down is and I can just put in that little kind of kink of the drain pipe there. It's going on to the next house um, so I might just leave that but it means that I can then put in the next bit of detail. So. Underneath the drain pipe you can see the kind of the top of that tiny little window. There's a bit where the stone like sticks out at the top of the building. And then underneath that there are little bricks holding that up. It's little details like this that will make something 
look interesting or not so that's why I'm going in with that and then I'm going to put this window in here there little window sill there and I'm going to come back to doing the window panes I actually think I made that a little bit too short and fat but never mind it's okay so I can start putting in where the windows are going to be there and there You may have noticed that all I'm doing at this point is just going over my pencil lines. But occasionally it's helpful to put in a little bit of extra detail. So here I can add just a little bit more windowsill. There. And then do the next one down. I made that window a bit skinny so I'm trying to be a bit more careful with that one so hi um, so hi new people on the chat hello Lindsay um, it's very good to see you all here um, if you've got any like comments or if um, there's any kind of questions about what I'm doing then feel free to put them there and I will try and uh, look over and see if I can answer any um, while while I'm drawing as well um, I am gonna put this line along here I'm gonna break it so I can put the lamp in later and then angle that down a bit now I think I'm just gonna I'm not gonna do the next door house I'm just gonna do this one today I think I think it would be good to kind of put in some extra context and you know the shops next to it and that's something I can go back to later if I want to but I think for today um, just because it's the first time I'm doing this live streaming and because um, I want to kind of keep to time and yeah, lots of reasons. I think it's probably just good to, to focus on this one, uh, this one building here. So um, let's put in the windows. I'm just being a little bit careful to um, try and not in, not assume I know what it looks like so I'm keeping going back to the the photo and just checking that what I think it looks like is actually what it looks like um, it's really easy to kind of go oh right okay I assume that I know what's going on here and and then you've drawn a line and actually it's gone through something that was in front of it so like doing the, win the window sills there I just wanted to kind of be careful to get these boards in front of the window sills because they're kind of resting up against it it wouldn't have been the end of the world if they if they didn't work like that but um but yeah it's handy if you don't have to kind of fix things later so I'm going to, um, what am I going to do? I think, I think I'm starting to want to put details in down here. Um, I think I can put in the step. So let's put in the step there down to the street. And then there's like a door there. That's the, the kind of the bottom of the door there. 
there's a little bowl here I don't know if it's like a doggy water bowl or something but I'll put that in and at, at this point I am starting to go okay I'm, I'm wanting to put these details in so now I'm going to go back to the top and uh, just kind of do a little review of everything and then put in the details as I go further down the page Okay, so the chimney has a little like line of bricks that stick out around the top there. There's not much else. Um, there's the like lead flashing around the bottom, but I've kind of already put that in because I put a couple of lines there. I can put a line along here for the roof like ridge line, and I can even put some little marks on it like that for the uh, for the roof tiles. I think it would be good to put some texture on the roof um, and I'm going to hold my pen at an angle and hold it really lightly, actually maybe not, that's too much of an angle, hold it really lightly and just draw it along the roof and where it kind of breaks up I'm just going to kind of leave it like that. And just get that sense of there being roof tiles up there and hopefully the breaks in the lines being inconsistent because I'm kind of holding the pen lightly and I'm holding it at that like weird angle where it's kind of sometimes it makes a mark and sometimes it doesn't um, but because there it'll happen at different places over the as I draw the pen across the page you get these kind of little gaps where there's uh, where there's no pen marks and you just it kind of gives you that sense of like sometimes there's light falling on it and sometimes there's not um, so I quite like that rather than having solid lines all the way across so what next um, I've drawn my uh, drain pipe in there already and I've done the bricks there this window needs something so the window's got four window panes so I'm just going to draw four little rectangles in it for the windows. Okay. The windows here, um, so yeah, so this one here uh, looks like it's kind of flush with the, the wall. The ones here are definitely recessed. So I can draw a little line under the top of the window and then down the left hand side there and under the top of the window and down the right hand side there and it just looks like the windows are set back a little bit. I'll do the same for these ones. There's hardly any gap between these lines because it's set back a bit but it's only like a, you know, it's only a short distance. And then these are sash windows. So what that means is they've got like a top pane that goes across. And then there's a bottom pane. And around each there's a frame. And then there are two panes in the top and two panes in the bottom. And the bottom panes kind of slide underneath the top pane so you get something that looks a bit like that I'm going to do that again um, and um, so yeah so I'm wondering if I can zoom you in a little bit I'm going to try and zoom you in so you can see the window a little bit better okay so um, so halfway across there's a, a sash bar that goes across it goes down a little bit at the right and the left and then inside that there is two panes at the top and two at the bottom oh, and then that the divider so the the divider for the uh, for the two underneath kind of goes underneath the uh, the ones that are sticking out. 
So the one at the top is further, further towards you, the one at the back is recessed. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so then the windows down here work the same, they're taller, um, so the panes will look bigger. And the one on the left is slightly open. So I'm going to draw this one on the right closed, so it's exactly the same as the, uh, the other two I've just drawn. But then the one on the left is open a little bit, so I'll, I'll try and draw that as well. So... Um, so what have we got here? So actually the the top is the same level. And the bottom is like slightly up. Oh, hang on, there's a one, there's a bar across here. This is what I mean about assuming that I know what's going on. And I just, like, I assume I know what an open window looks like. And then there's a bar that goes across there. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but I'm just trying to draw what I've seen. So, there we go. That is what, how that window looks different to that window. And then down at the bottom, we've got this lamp. It's got a shape a bit like that at the top. I can see four kind of bars coming down from there to like a flat bit at the bottom. And I think that's about right. Um, and then the windows down here. So that is actually kind of... There's like a corner bit there, so the windows on the front are there, and then this is like recessed a bit. So, and the same on the other side. So I can put a line down here for like the corner of these front windows, and then some little lines where the panes of window head backwards towards the door. And then in each one, there is uh, four windows, four, four windows, four window panes across and three down. So I'm just going to try and draw these in. I never leave myself quite enough room. So sometimes like the top ones are bigger and the bottom ones are smaller. I like to try and get them all even, but it's, but yeah, it's one of the things I don't always manage. That's not too bad actually, like that. And then the same on this side. So, drawing four little dashes across the top, trying to make them kind of about the same length, and then a little way from the, uh, the, I don't know what you call this bit here, it's like, um, it's like a, a decorative panel, except it's not all that decorative, it's just a piece of wood. Um, I'm going to get really good if I draw, keep on drawing architecture, knowing what different things are called, because every time I say on a video what something's, I, could, I don't know what something's called, somebody, somebody will tell me. And then, see, they were a bit wonky. They're not all the same height. And I think I'm just going to put, like, there's some little bottles in the window there. I'm going to make some little shapes in there. I don't want to do too much. And I'm not being too... Um, deliberate about what things are. I'm just kind of making some 
shapes in the windows. This one's got more like square packages in it. And then you can see the edge of the building down there. Right, nearly there. Um, Lindsay asks, do you draw from a photo of a place you visited? <laughs> yes, yes. I, I like to work from my own photos. Um, I know that I, I do occasionally work from uh, other photos, but if I work from a, a place that I've been and a photo that I've taken, I know that I've got the copyright for it. So it's, you know, I don't have to worry about like somebody else's um, intellectual property. Um, but also I feel like the composition, I mean, this is a straight on photo. There's not a lot of work done in the composition here, but I feel like the composition is half the battle. So sometimes if you're taking something from an angle, then it's it's useful to kind of know you've taken it yourself because then you've you've done some of the composition. Also, you kind of get a feeling for a place. Um, that's not to say I would never draw from a photo that I don't know, um, but uh, um, but yeah, I do like to I like to go out, take my own photos, and then use those as reference. Um, so oh. Um, G. Fody says, the transom is over the door. Thank you. Transom. Great. I'm not sure I know, I'm not sure I've ever heard that word before, but that's good. See, I get new knowledge. That's great. Thank you. And now I'm going to put the door in. So I've, the line that I drew is kind of like the, the whole door frame. And now there is like a little window above the door and then there is like the actual wooden door frame and then I think this door is actually open so what you can see inside you can't see very much inside so I'm going to put a few lines in there and then there is actually like an A board like a like a chalkboard, um, probably with some COVID safety information on it. That's probably what's in there. And I think I can see like bits of the bar behind it. So I'll just put in a few lines there. Um, if you can't see much detail, you don't need to put much detail in. In fact, it doesn't really matter sometimes what things are, as long as you've kind of done something. I could have even have made up like a door or copied one of the other doors from the building, something like that. And then I can see there's a few things that I've missed out. So there is um, the, the shop sign or the, the bar sign. It's obviously, it's a tavern. Um, and then, so yeah, a double line around that because it's got a little frame around it. And then I'm going to have a go at doing the symbol and the lettering. So there's some Smith's tools there. Um, and then um, I'm just going to go for it. I think sometimes I I do the letters in pencil first, but today I'm just going to try and write them in. Tavern. And if I was doing this a little bit bigger, I might try and copy the, the typeface, the font, a little bit. But I, I'm just writing it in. So, um, so yeah, that's just my normal handwriting which as you can see is a bit messy. And then underneath that, there are some little cross shaped like iron pieces. There's one there, there's one over here. There's a one over here. And I think these are all hanging basket, 
hangers. Maybe. I'm actually not sure now. But the ones on the left and the right definitely are. They've definitely got hanging baskets on them. So I'm going to put that in. So just a, a tub. And then some squiggly lines for the flowers and foliage and stuff on the top. And I can even put like a suggestion of the, the, the cables on there to hold it in place. Put that one over here. Squiggly lines and a little extra line around there. Um, and then there's a little shield thing above here. Now, when I did a little drawing of an Ashbourne shop place before, somebody said that's a Christmas tree holder for um, putting a Christmas tree in. Um, so all the shops will have a little Christmas tree, which is really kind of quite cool. And then here there's a over here there's another shop sign like a hanging one um, and this but it's at a weird angle so I'm not going to be able to read any of it but I can get the shape of it in and I think it's got I think there's a light to either side of it maybe something like that So just a little bit more on these little boards here and I'm not worrying that these look like writing, just some squiggles. And it looks like there's something written on them. So the shop next, the, the building next to it's got some little circular bits um, like above the window here and then kind of about here. So I'm going to put them in as well. Again, I'm not really sure what these are. So I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep going. Um, but yeah, they're in there. And... Um, Oh, Felicity says we call them eaves or awnings. Ah, I would have said eave was, well, I, w I would have said an awning was like a canvas bit that um, came down. Um, and I thought the eaves were like at the side of a, a building, but I may be wrong. Um, I often am. Um, and um, G. Freddy's going to use a white pen for lettering. Yep, that looks, that would be great. Yes. Um, I'm going to get rid of my pencil lines now. And I think I've lost something with not having the edges of the building in there. So I'm going to use my pen and just draw in a little line for the edge of the building. Right down there, like that. It's quite light. There's hardly any definition between the building on the um, left and this one because they're both in, in brick. Um, there's an obvious difference with the one on the right because that's rendered. But uh, yeah, maybe that needs a little bit more. So yeah, and at this point, it's more about what the what the picture needs rather than anything else. Missed a bit there. Okay. <laughs> Um, Ailey was wondering what the round things were as well. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Um, I'm going to zoom you out a little bit again so you can see my palette. There we go. How's that? And colours. So what colours did I say I was going to use? Going to use burnt umber. Um, which one's that? It's that one. No, it's not that one. Yeah. 
Um, my, I started taking the colours out to use in different um, uh, paintings and sometimes they'll go back in the right order so I'm just making sure I've got the right ones. Um, and that, yeah, that one's French Ultramarine. Okay, let's take those two out. Um, I'm going to use a yellow um, and then we'll see if we need anything else. So I've got those three colours there. Just going to add a little bit of water to them. Oh, the black discs were attached with tie rods to the back of the building to stop the walls bulging. Oh, right. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Ah, I've heard of that. Yes. Uh -huh. Probably from watching renovation shows on TV. Uh -huh. Great. Thank you. Right. So the burnt umber, which I'm going to use for the brick, and a mix of burnt umber and ultramarine blue, and just keep slowly adding that colour until I get a grey that I'm happy with. Um, I quite often keep a little scrap of paper so that I can test my colours out on. Um, so, yeah, that's that's not a bad colour for the uh, for the roof. So that's just the the burnt umber with the ultramarine in. Um, so let's do that. Let's do the roof first. See, so it's actually a little pale. I'm going to paint it all in anyway and then let's go back and mix a bit more of that and I can add a little bit more in and actually if some areas are lighter and some areas are darker I think it, it looks better anyway. Um, I'm going to leave a little gap where the uh, where the drain pipe is because that allows me to start painting the brick immediately um, without waiting for the roof bit to dry and then I can go back in and fill that bit in later. So I'm going to go straight in with just the burnt umber for the brick. And try and leave the areas that are white. And again, if you have some areas that are darker and some areas that are lighter, I think it looks better anyway. And what you can do is you can just dip into the grey a little bit and add in just some slight variations in colour in places. Go back to the burnt umber, a bit more in there. You can do the same with other colours as well, so if you wanted to like, add a little bit of red in places, oops that's a bit too much, a bit much there, let's get rid of that. Like you can add a bit of yellow in places, a bit of red in places and just change that, you know, change the tone of the colour a little bit. A bit more of the grey over here. 
there. Um, someone wants to, Amy Rose wants to know about the brushes I'm using. Um, so this um, brush I got fairly recently and I'd not heard of it before but I wanted a brush that was synthetic um, but that held a lot of water or, or a lot of colour and um, came to a really fine point um, and gave me a lot of control and I came across these ones called Precision Brushes from Raphael um, and I randomly bought myself a size 8 and I absolutely love it and I want to buy some more of them. So um, the other brushes I have are from Pro Arti or is it Pro Art? I'm not sure. It's got an E on the end but uh, um, these are ones that they sell in pretty much every art shop in Edinburgh so uh, that's why I have these ones. Um, this one is a number four and I've got other sizes as well. That one's a seven. Um, but yeah, I like these. They're they're not quite as um, precise as the uh, as this one. Um, this one's quite long, um, uh, but I like that um, it gives you some control because it's it's actually quite stiff. It's like you could it's quite bouncy, um, and it kind of gives you a lot of control over where you where you put your colours. Um, so yeah, so that's this is my favourite brush at the minute, um, but that may change. So, a little bit more, um, actually, I missed that bit of uh, that line down the bottom where the brick stops. So, down here there's some brick and then there's like a, a black painted bit below that. So I'll put the brick in there. And then um, I've got um, I've got all of these things kind of happening in the windows. So the ones at the top, they're just dark, and I can use the same kind of grey that I did on the um, on the roof there. Um, and at this point, it might be useful to go to a smaller brush. I'm going to see how this one does. Actually, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, and just fill in and try and leave some of the white um, so it looks like you can see the, the white mullions and the, the window frames. Um, these windows here, um, are, you can see like into the darkness of the room behind them so I'm going to use that one again. And then this one here as well. There. This one here, the windows, they've got the blinds drawn. So you can see there's some difference, but not a lot. So I'm just going to use a very light wash of this. In fact, that's probably too dark. I've just added a load of water into the same kind of grey mix and I'm going to take some out. So I can paint it on and then take it away. Paint it on, take it away. I'm, I'm sure you can hardly see the difference there, but, but I can tell. That they're just slightly pale grey behind the windows and they'll become more obvious when I put some shadow on as well. And then down here we've got um, all that's happening in these windows here but again I think um, I think I should just paint them dark. Um, I've left this little bit on the side because there's I can see some brick behind that so I'm going to leave that and I'm going to leave the little bottles and I will um I'll do something a bit different with them once the once the window color is dried assuming that happens during the time of the live stream Okay
I'm just checking this bit's dry up here. Oh, I missed the chimney. Classic. I always miss the chimney. I always forget the chimney. There we go, let's put the chimney in. There we are. And then I'm mixing up some more of this grey and I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So I'm starting with the blue this time and then keep adding the burnt umber, in, und, the, the burnt umber into it. Maybe a little bit more blue this time. And that's still wet. Now I'm getting to the point where there's things that are kind of wet and I can't paint next to them. Let's see, those are dry. I can paint those little bits in. The wall ties. I can also do the drain pipe and for this I'm going to switch to a smaller brush just to give myself a little bit of control. And I'm propping my finger up on the page just to help me keep it nice and steady. Oh, and there's hardly any colour on there. Let's try that again. I just want this to be a little bit darker. There we go. Um, so yeah, I'm just checking the chat again. So yeah, um, I think those bits are all dry so I can paint in these little supports. And then do this bit, oh that's still wet, okay. Do these bits behind the door. I actually think that's a bit dark. And just tap that a bit and take some out. These bits are all dry so I can do this like black bit at the bottom. Not, maybe not, but if it runs it'll run. Okay. Um, just keep looking and seeing other bits that I need to do. So I just need to do the top of that lamp there. and. I'll just put a little bit, um, a little bit of colour on it, just so that it doesn't stand out as like being this really white thing. Um, right, I'm gonna have to do the green. So um, now I'm gonna mix up the ultramarine with the yellow. Oh. That's bright yellow. <laughs> That's nowhere near the right green. <laughs> but while I've got it, I can use that with a tiny little brush and just do some of the foliage in those little hanging baskets. It'll save me mixing up that later on. But yeah, let's try a little bit more blue. That's looking better. I can try the green on here and see what it looks like. It's still much brighter than the, the green in the photo. So we'll add a little bit more blue. But yeah, that's looking better. But yeah, you can use your um, artist's license as well. Artistic license and uh, make it whatever green you like. I think that may be a bit strong, so I'm just adding a little bit of water in it. I can always 
I can always add more colour later. And just check in, I can paint the sign in. That's almost completely obliterated the writing that I put on. Um, it will dry lighter, but if I go in and tap some of it up, um, it'll be a bit more clear what that is. Um, and then these signs down here. And then I'm just looking to see if there's anything else that green. And there is tight, like the this little bit around the door frame here is green. So I'm just going in with the very tip of my brush. And it's a little bit messy, but that's okay. And I can add a little bit of that darker green into the hanging baskets as well. I think we're nearly there. Oh, hang on. I've got to do this sign here. So that one there needs to be green. Um, so yeah, um, could paint the bakehouse close where Outlander was filmed. Oh, I don't know where that is. I'll have to look that up. But yeah, probably could. <laughs> Yes, I haven't um, done very many of Edinburgh. It's that thing where you like, if you live somewhere, you don't tend to do the like the touristy stuff. So, um, so yeah, so I I live in Edinburgh, so I don't tend to visit very 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 much. Um, I just tend to go to the places that I you know that I I I kind of know, and I don't tend to um, kind of go up to the Royal Mile or any of the Kind of the old town very often um I have to kind of make a special trip for it it's sometimes easier to to do um uh, uh places where you know you're visiting for a special reason or you're on holiday and i should make more of actually being in edinburgh because it's it's stunningly beautiful mm -hmm. right i'm gonna do uh, i'm gonna do my little bit of pavement I like to kind of ground a building. It doesn't always need a sky, but I feel like it needs a ground. So I just like to paint in the little bit of pavement next to it and then uh, just allow it to kind of fall away. And then the little bits in the windows need a little bit more something. So I'm just going back to this burnt umber because it's sitting there and I'm just dotting it in where I've got these little bottles and there. So it just looks like there's something happening in the window. And now I'm just testing to see if things are dry. Oh, oh, that wasn't, that wasn't dry. Oh, oh well, I've got a little splodge there now. Um, it's at this point where I'm kind of going, yeah, it's pretty much there, but things are maybe looking a little flat, so it needs some shadow. So I'm going to zoom you in again, as I think it's easier to see. Um, and I'm going back to this um, grey mix, the um, burnt umber and ultramarine mix, and I'm going to drop my brush and get that everywhere. And I'm going to go around and add shadows everywhere that they should be. So on the side of the chimney is an obvious one. So that side of the chimney. And then you can see like the shadow of the chimney heading out this way. So I can just flick my brush there and you get that kind of shadow there. Um, and then underneath the drain pipe, and the, all on there. So yeah, so I've switched to the smaller brush this time. And then anywhere 
that's recessed so we said those windows were recessed a little bit so I can put a little bit of shadow underneath each window and then you get this shadow of the like the window on the blinds so within the window panes here and then there's a shadow underneath that bar of the sash window there now this one will be the same but you won't see it as well because we've put the the grey in but it still helps if you add in that little bit of shadow underneath the like behind the window panes and then these ones too paint that in a little bit darker and yeah just like underneath every window pane there you probably wouldn't see a shadow underneath these ones because what's behind them is so far behind them but I still think it helps them to stand out definitely more shadow under there. I'm running out of this colour now so I'm going to mix up a little bit more and it's like under the edge of that step under these windows here actually they had some little supports that I didn't put in and I think that line's a bit harsh under there so I'm just going to dry my brush and just spread that down a little bit And I think we're nearly there, we're nearly there. I need something for these little baskets, so I'm going to do some blue and yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I'm going to do. So um, let's see. Oh, I need a pop of red in the window. Okay, I can do that. Pop a red in the window. There we are. It's a little poster or something. There we go. We could have some red flowers in the basket too. It's best to do that when the green's dry. And in fact, you can do it with... Um, sometimes I use like masking fluid and just mask out some little bits and then um, for flowers. Um, some of the bricks are like redder than others. Um, but I decided with this one I wasn't going to try and do every brick. Um, I'm doing it quite small, so it would be quite difficult to do anyway. But, I mean, it's not impossible. Um, but uh, there's different ways you can do the brick. You can do the brick with a pen, and you can do that. Or you can, like, do each brick separately with a tiny little brush. But I think that's it for today. <laughs> And actually, that's that's just about over our hour, so I think that was good timing. Um, so I think I'm going to come back to talking to you. Um, I'm going to come back to the main screen. And uh, yeah, if anyone's got any questions or anything, um, then uh, let me let me know. Hey. So there we go. So 
yeah, I thought it would be good to do something like like a straight on uh, building without any kind of perspective or anything like that for the first one uh, uh, because it's quite similar to what I've done on the channel before. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think it, you know, I'm quite happy to do other things. Um, I really want to kind of do more street scenes and that kind of thing. So uh, so if there's any particular requests you've got for things, then uh, then yeah, let me know. Mm -hmm. So Aileen wants to go and find some interesting buildings to, to paint, yeah. Um, uh, G Fody says hi from Florida, hello. I can't believe like like people are watching me from Florida. That's, um, yeah, it's so cold. It's been so rainy and cold today. It's, uh, it's, it's not been a great day, so yeah. Um, but yeah, I hope you're having a good time in Florida. <laughs> so yeah, thank you all for watching today. And uh, yeah, thank you for your comments and all the suggestions. And yeah, it's, it's been lovely. So thank you very much. Um, I've really enjoyed this. I hope you have too. Uh, if this is something that you want to see again, then um, then yeah, let me know um, because I'd love to do it again. Um, in fact, I, 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 um, I don't want to kind of promise too much, but I think it would be really good to kind of do this and more, um, to do this more regularly. Uh, so. Yeah, so yeah, let me know um, what you want to see from me. And I, oh, 55 degrees, hang on. I'm not sure what 55 degrees is. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, sound, it sounds good, but yeah, I don't know, I don't know how, what that is in, uh, in, in Celsius. Um, but uh, it's cold in Alabama too. Oh, right, mm -hmm. guess. I just I just imagine that we're like that everywhere else in the world is hot and sunny. Um, I know it's not, but uh, um, but uh, but yeah, it, it can feel like that sometimes when you when you're in Edinburgh. That uh, um, yeah, yeah, like the rest of the world is is experiencing something different. Freezing in Michigan. Yeah, I know it could be freezing in Michigan. Yeah, mm -hmm. fifty five is late spring. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds very nice. Mm -hmm. Ten degrees Fahrenheit in Boston. I've actually been in Boston in February, and yeah, it it was chilly. It was very chilly. <laughs> so yeah, um, so yeah, so thanks very much for. Uh, this if you've if you've painted along today if you're going to paint along um i'd love to see uh, what you paint um i always say that you can post things on instagram and i love uh, like when you tag me in in posts um and you can do it privately as well so they don't go onto the feed uh, if that's what you want um i don't know if there's a if there's a better way of doing that um but uh instagram works for me so um it would be nice if there was like a way to do it on youtube because then it kind of keeps it all together but uh um but yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that there is. I'm not sure if you can put like pictures in the comments. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining in today. Um, Felicity wants to know what's the notebook I paint in. Um, it's by Moleskin. Um, so I don't know. Um, I don't know if you get that brand. Um, but yes, it's. Uh, they mainly do like little notebooks for kind of taking notes in and they do like lots of different sizes but um, this one's particularly a watercolour one so it's got um, watercolour paper in um, and it's, it's, it's really nice, it's, it's a good quality like notebook um, but obviously with watercolour paper you're paying a little bit more for, the, uh, for that um, but yeah I do like them and they're really, they're really portable, they tend to be what I take if I'm going travelling somewhere So I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you all very much for, for joining in. Um, can I share my sketchbook, please? Um, well, yeah, I'm sure you've seen most of these anyway. Um, so, oh, actually, yes. So, so the, I'll tell you what, I'll switch to the overhead camera for this. Um, right. And zoom out a bit. 
So a lot of these you'll have seen it anyway because they're ones that I've done on the channel. Um, it tends to be like that. Um, there's a few that um, I haven't... Um, if I'm working at home I tend to um, work in uh, um, just on random loose sheets of paper. Um, this is one I did on location. Um, and then, yeah, this one I did on location as well. So yeah, and then there's like various things that I've done for different projects in here. Um, so yeah, just kind of sketching, trying things out. Um, and yeah, and then a few like random patterns and stuff at the beginning of the book. Um, so yeah, this one's mainly been things that I've done for the channel and I've got different sketchbooks that I use for different things. Uh, next week I've got a sketchbook um, live stream that I'm doing but I'm talking about these sketchbooks that I keep which are full of random abstract patterns. So there's all sorts of things in here and I use these as a kind of inspiration for making abstract prints. Um, so I'll be talking a little bit more about that next week. So um, lots of these random things. And then this is a screen print that I put the finishing touches on today. So this is the kind of work that I'm putting into the exhibition that I've been talking about non-stop. So, so yeah, so that, that's a completely different type of sketchbook. <laughs> So thank you very much for, for joining in today. And yeah, it's I've, I've really enjoyed this. I hope you have too. And I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. I'm not quite sure where my next like recorded video is going to be. Uh, next week I'm going to be uh, uh, setting up and then kind of, what do you call it, invigilating um, an exhibition all week. So, um, so yeah, so I'll be doing the, the live streams then. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I sell watercolours. Um, the watercolours that I do for this channel, I tend to sell on Etsy. So I have an Etsy store and the link for that is usually in the description of uh, like every video. Um, I also sell screen prints and I tend to do that through uh, through galleries and exhibitions. But I do have a website, separate website for that as well. Um, other than line and wash, is there a name for building sketches? Um, uh, architectural sketching. Um, yeah, that's, that tends to be what people call it, I think. Um, but, uh, um, urban sketching is another term that a lot of people use. Um, but urban sketching, um, the people who kind of coined the term urban sketching, um, really like to keep it for, uh, sketching that's done on location. So I don't tend to use it, um, because I quite often, uh, like working from my studio, um, uh, rather than on location. I feel like I get better results that way. So I uh, so yes, I don't tend to use urban sketching, but I might I might end up putting it into like a tag or a description or something because it's a kind of similar style and it'll it'll it mean that my work will be seen alongside other people's work that's a similar style. And actually I think it's a really interesting conversation to be having like um, in the last couple of years, a lot more people have been doing sketching from studios because it's been harder to get out and especially to travel. Uh, and you like, so yes, a lot of people, a lot more people are working from photos and that kind of thing. So, um, so it'll be interesting to see if there's any movement on that. But, uh, um, but yeah, so I don't tend to call my sketches urban sketches, but uh, um, because I don't feel like they completely fit that category. But um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, architectural sketching generally is what I call it. Um, do you seal your watercolours with any medium? No, I, I don't. Um, uh, the watercolours that I use are professional quality watercolours and they... Um, uh, I, I'm going to do a video all about this anyway, um, but they're, um, I, I kind of choose them. I, yeah, I want to pick ones that are light fast and that will last uh, without fading. Um, so, so that's why I wanted to kind of have uh, professional quality watercolours for that. Uh, and then they shouldn't need sealing. 
um, unless you're not kind of unless you're going to display them without glass so if you display them behind behind glass then the glass acts as a uv filter i think um if you're not going to um, display them behind glass then you want to put something on to protect them actually um i know liz chatterton has a video about how to seal watercolors with wax that i watched um a few weeks ago so that was really interesting her youtube channel is great if you're um, interested in watercolor so um yeah check her out as well um but no i don't seal with seal them with anything uh, right, I've said goodbye like three times now, so I'm, I, really, I really should go. Um, if there are any other questions, then um, uh, yeah, I will try and answer them another time. Okay, take care and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye bye.